part 24 of my building black pearl. I started some of the work on the masts and some other areas like that. So I'm really going from pole two, which is the second book, and starting into the third and final pole. If I haven't been clear in the past, you could buy the ship just the first part, then the second, and then the third. The third part doesn't have much in it. It's, it's a lot of the mass work and the extra little pieces. There's just one little placard, uh, for the most part, of um, wooden materials, but to get the ship done right, you really will need it. So keep that in mind. Let me show you how I got to this point. Working on the crow's nests, and these are very delicate. So what I would recommend is on this framing, instead of trying to push down where the where it's attached, that will break some of these parts. If you can cut away on both sides of that little tab where it's connected, I've had better success in not tearing it up. Now you can't do that everywhere on all of them, but you can get the majority. You have to, well, see I got that half already. If I can cut on this side, I stand less a chance. Okay, there's one right there. This side's a little thicker, so I might be able to, now that that's free, it'll slide over that direction. Yep. Get this out of the way. And see, here's that little tab. And now I can cut it and it'll pop off that way. Or just pop off. And you'll notice on each one of these, there's a little gap there. That's because that's for that little hole. So this will line up right like that. A minor thing that I discovered on this little uh, rectangular hole or square hole here if you put these on the wrong direction, that hole will be covered up. So if you notice closely, this is shorter than this is. So thankfully I had not glued them on yet, and I noticed that. So then you can line it up with the back and then center it. What I've been doing is just taking a touch of CA glue in a couple of the corners just to get it in position. So I have trouble centering. I've discovered that my eyes don't center very well, so a lot of times I use a measuring device too. Don't know what's up with my eyes. I've asked my optometrist, but it's just a fluke with me. So hopefully that little Tip will help someone from not making a minor error. I've started working on the masts and reviewing the books and the plans. I finally found what I was looking for and that's the the um, length of each mast. So let me back out here. So I found this on plan number four and right here it shows where the deck is and then I could measure up here to where the uh, this the lower section of the main mast that's approximately 11 and a half inches to that point right there i've had a lot of success in using my belt sander to taper the masts i've tried several different ways i tried filing it sanding it by hand putting it in my power drill and trying to sand it but the belt sander has worked out amazingly well now, I do have to be careful where the tip of the dowel rod is. You have to make sure that that rest that it's leaning against is almost touching the belt sander belt. Otherwise, that can slip underneath there and it'll break the, uh, the mask right off. So, it's been pretty successful and you can see I'm working on it here. And a little bit of a gentle touch to it, but... Uh, I was able to get it right on the very first try, so I'm real happy with using the belt sander to taper everything to do with sails and masts. Something else that I do with my masts 
is I uh, burnish them, is what I'll call it, and I take a propane torch and I flame it and put kind of a burnt patina, you might say, to the wood because I don't want it stained all the exact same color and that's what would happen when I stain it. So here's a very high tech piece of equipment here. I've got a, a uh, clamp hooked into a vise to hold it nice and steady and then I will pull this clamp and it will turn on my drill to whatever speed I want. That's nice and slow. I can speed it up. I also keep a soaking wet paper towel handy just in case I torch it too much. So you see the different colorations that I have. Let me loosen this. So this part down here is what's going to get cut off. I have my mark right there. So, And that gives me a little variance in the patina. I'll do the same thing with the drill. I'll t turn it on and use it to uh, rotate. I'll let that set a few minutes. I'll come back. I'll do the same thing with a uh, another rag or a paper towel. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe it off some. You can see not much more is coming off. And I'm not Sure, I don't have any scientific proof, but when I use that uh, torch on it and do the burnishing, it seems to open up the wood pores and they absorb the stain even more. So that's, uh, that's how I make my masks. And let me start getting them in place as soon as this gets dry. Actually, I have more work. There's some rope work that goes on the mast also. To clarify on these full-scale plans, Starting with the second one, it goes into detail on how to measure each of the masks. They're each uh, clearly spelled out, and it gives you the measurement, or it gives you the deck, and you measure up, and then you have to also allow for what goes below the deck. So it's pretty clearly spelled out, starting with plan two, and continues on through plan for here's the four mast and shows all the different parts so that'll be very helpful as I get into that type work in the process of assembling the masts and, and these are not glued in place I was doing some research and I sorry I don't recall the person that showed this on their YouTube channel I just saw it for an instant and I thought it was a great idea any place where they have to do any drilling of holes to attach things on the masts they do it before they put them in place. That way you don't have to do it on the ship. So you can see where I've attached some of these eyelets where uh, the block will get tied to. Here's another example on the bottom of that mast. There's one. I've been going through the plans to see where I can get some of that done before I actually put the masts into place. I've been preparing some of these very small blocks that will be used on the masts at different places. So I want to pre-assemble them. I know you're supposed to, um, I think the word is seize, which would amount to get it on there, make a, a loop. You'll loop it on and then you wrap around oh, approximately seven times, seven or eight times, and there's a way you tie it off. It's just really time um, extensive and these are so tiny I'm not going to go through that hassle so what I'm doing is making them the simplest way I could come up with so what I've done is this is painters tape kind of a masking tape it's on inside out so the sticky side is up I put it on this block of wood so it kind of holds it to this piece of paper it's stuck down and then I've been taking a block I don't know, you probably can't see, 
but these are single blocks. There's just one single hole, and that's where the rope that goes to the ship is. So I'm going to put it on here, and that hole is facing up so I can see it. Now hopefully you can still see halfway okay. And I take a piece of this, about six or eight inches, and I'm going to simply tie a square knot. And then, let me get some better lighting. As I get the knot smaller, just slightly larger than the block, there's little grooves in the block that that'll fit in. And once I get it to that, I can kind of catch it in there. There I have it. Now I'm going to finish that square knot. This did take a little bit of practice. Okay, there I have that. And then I take the longer piece and I kind of pull it in tight. And now I want it to be at the top of the block, because right now it's a little bit on the side. So pull it around to the top of the block and see how the, the uh, the top one is coming out from the top of the block, pretty much, and you can you can play with it. Then I take just a little dab of CA glue, and then I'll, again I'll pull this one that I want to keep. Then I set that aside to dry. Once it's dry, this one I did a while ago. And I can take that tag piece, slide it as close to the knot as I can get without cutting it off, and there you go. So I've got about half of them done. I've got uh, several more to do using my belt sander worked well enough and I'm going to go ahead and use it for uh, the, the parts of the mast that uh, the rope work and the sails tie to. So what I've done, I've marked my length. This one is going to be 13 inches and then I marked the center and I'm going to leave this so that I can do the taper work and again I don't want to taper any further than this. This is a halfway point. Once I get this side tapered to where I want then I'll cut the other end off, reverse it and taper from here back towards the middle. Before I get too far along, what I'll do, I've got a couple devices I can measure with. So I want to I want to measure this down to a certain point, and then I'll. It almost looks like an oar handle is what I'll create right here on the end, and that'll be the last step with a different sander. Uh, so I don't want to go down too far. What I've done, I've tapered down from uh, 6 millimeters to 4.15 millimeters at the end. I'll go ahead and finish this piece up and show you how I put that little notched handle looking thing on the end of this. For this I just use my little belt sander. I could also just use a small uh, file and I may do a little bit of filing too. So I'm going to uh, just to be consistent probably make these about a quarter of an inch. Don't know how well you can see that, but it just has a little notch to catch the rope when I tie the rope on the end of it. So that's it. Part 24 is in the books. I'll keep working and I'll be back in a few days or a couple of weeks with another segment. As always, thanks for watching.